Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to learn a bit more to do with the blanket. It's more bobbins today and how to kind of handle them and whatever. Now, what I use at the moment are just normal clothes pegs. Okay, and all I do, excuse the colour of the wool, I just try to use something that was kind of very contrasting to what's already there so that you can see. So, so it's going to be blue. Bit of an odd match, but hey, well, I'm only showing you what to do. I'm not going to keep this piece. So generally what I do is I hold the end in there and I tuck that right in there because then when I'm finished, it doesn't just pull out and I end up not realising I finished the bobbin. So literally all I do is, I apologise for my hand gets a bit close to the camera. Literally just wind a whole load on. I will show you what I used to use just in case you, I don't know, you might not want to use pegs. And then I've shown you the clothes area that I peg all these to. Out the way. I'm not going to need a lot today, but I tend to wind it different ways so that it doesn't just fall off when it's attached to the clothes area, which I have um, experienced before. One little tug and half the pegs unraveled. So I tend to wind it different ways. And it stops that happening so much. I'm not going to need a lot of this today. So I'm just going to okay, chop that. And we'll leave that there just because that's going to be coming into the picture shortly. The other two I've still kept as balls just because... Oh, sorry guys. I'm going to try and keep my feet still because that's when I keep knocking you lot. Um... If you're not a fan of pegs, this is what I used to do. I bought these off eBay. And I also bought, let me just move this, the bobbin rack. So I used to wind my wool onto here. This used to be, a, it was like shelves. So it was a three stack or a four stack and I chopped them all into separates. So I'd have these spread out across the table. I didn't actually mind this. The only... I'm just thinking. No, actually, it was all right. I didn't mind that, but I found that because I was doing more complicated um, patterns, it just wasn't working. So <laughs> I had to adapt and hence the pegs and the clothes area. So we are just going to be literally going back over what we did. This time I'm going to cut in some blue right here. So we're going to chain one to start. And remember that doesn't count so we're going to go into this first stitch right there so we're going to go in grab it grab the yarn and pull through both of those and again go through pull up a loop grab the yarn and go through both and i'm going to go halfway with these uh, halfway through the yellow go into your next one grab the yarn and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two into the next one Grab the yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to switch to blue. But remember, stop. Don't go any further. You can't finish the stitch in that colour, otherwise it'll overhang onto the other one. So this is a little awkward because this would normally be attached to my clothes area, but you can see. So I'm just going to sort of make a, a loop without a knot. You can make a slip knot if you like. I'll show you how to do you, I don't know if you've um, remembered from the first video hold on to the tail wrap the working yarn around your finger twice and hold it put the back one over the front one then put the new back one off your finger and it makes a slip knot give that a little tug it makes it tighter some people prefer to do this let's give that a tug okay and they prefer to pull that through instead it's entirely up to you or you can just create a false loop but there won't be a knot so then we're going to go into the next one grab the yarn pull up a loop yarn over pull through two through the next one grab the yarn pull up a loop yarn over pull through two so i am going to go just into the burnt orange 
Now I'm going to show you what to do with the tail. That should be there. I'm mixing up all my bobbins here. I'm going to show you what to do with this because if you just start going over here you're going to have this trailed across your front and you really don't want that. So the first stitch in the orange I'll let go but then push your orange up onto the top so when you're going into the next stitch you're going over and under it over the top of it and underneath it to go through that stitch. Pull up the blue yarn Grab yarn over and pull through the, both. See, it's tucked in there now. And you can do that for as many stitches as necessary. So we're going to go through the stitch. But this strand here is going to pin that strand there down. And then make sure you're coming above it when you're yarning over and pulling through too. And it's tucked in there. And it's hidden. There's a tiny, tiny little strand there. But it's not noticeable. I'm going to do one more pull up a loop. Now I'm going to stop because I want to switch to my orange and it's already where I want it to be pretty much because I've tucked it under. So we're going to yarn over and pull through both of those. So now I'm just going to go to the end. Through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now, when it comes to switching and turning around, okay, if we turn clockwise, now then yarns are now twisted because they're coming from opposite sides. But it's up to you. If you're only working with a couple of colours, you can switch them all. But when you finish that row, if you switch that way, it unknots them again. Yeah, because this one's on top, so if you flick it that way, it'll end up back on the bottom. So you don't need to switch them, necessarily. And if it's on an area, you can't switch them anyway. <laughs> There's too many, but when you when you finish the row, just look at which way it needs to flick back. So we're going to go back again. Doing the single crochets, or double in UK terms. Mm. I'm going to show you what to do again. We're going to take the blue slightly over rather than the orange. Oops. So this next stitch is my last. So pull up a loop and leave it there. Drop that yarn. Now we need, for some reason it's gone underneath. We need to grab the blue, pull it through those two loops, give the orange a little tug. I always tug it and then I hold it in the, sorry, I tug it and then hold it in the back so it can't loosen again. Yeah. So then we're going to carry on with the blue. Remember when you change colours to always look at that first stitch. Sometimes it doesn't seem like one, but it is. So we're going to do some blue. Now we're going to go a couple over. If it's just one over, I'd leave it because it's really not going to matter because it's only going to go right to there. But if it's any more than one, then I will pin it on the second one like that and then stop because you're going to change colour or wherever you need to change colour. Grab that and pull it through and that's it. There's no, sorry I was trying to look, there's no strand on the back and there's not really one on the front. A tiny little one there that's it so we're going to finish the row so that is three color changes now right right okay sorry about that guys i'm so disorganized but you guys know me, that's me all over. So anyway, if I've done this correctly, there should be a link in my description box to download this PDF and print it out so that you can follow along. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to work a little square with you. Say square, it's 25 by 24. There's 24 rows. 
Um, I'm going to work through this with you and we're going to work out colour changes. Um, so you will need a background colour for which I have yellow. And at the most you're going to need four bobbins. Okay. And then for the heart, it's entirely up to you, but I've just gone, I've gone the easy route. I've gone with red. So I'm at the most I'm going to need, oh, I need four of those. So I'll wind this last one. So you'll need your hook, whichever hook size you've chosen, four, 4.5 or five mil. You're gonna need some DK or double knit yarn. Um, then you're gonna need pegs or some other way of, you know, using bobbins. Maybe it's the uh, cotton bobbins, like I showed you, the little wooden things. It's entirely up to you. You work with whatever you feel comfortable with using. And I will be honest, them wooden bobbins, they just work for a while. But then when I found that the designs I was doing got more technical, it just, it wasn't enough because I think there was like 36, two, four, six, eight, nine, eight, no, 27, I think, 27 bobbin pegs. And it wasn't enough. I think I, on this one, I had like 37 or 38 colour changes. So I had to find something big. So hence why I went with the... Um, Close area, and that works. I can concertina it and fold it away and set the way. I just pegged to it, so it's not right. So we've got four of each bobbin, okay? Because when we get to here, it's going to be like one, two, three, and four. We're not there yet, so don't worry about that. So put all your bobbins to one side for now. Take your background color, whatever that is, and as you'll notice on here, because I'm working you guys in um, single crochet or double in the UK. You're turning your work. So one row you're going to be working this way. Then the second row you're going to be working that way. And these are actually numbered so you'll know. And obviously you'll need either a pen or a pencil because we're going to mark the rows off as we go. So the first thing you're going to do is your chains. No, we're not. We're going to do the slip knot. So grab your tail. Wrap the working yarn around your finger twice and hold it. Take the back one just over the front one, then take that back one and drop it off your finger. When you pull those two, it pulls up snug against your hook, okay? So if you're unclear on chains, go back to the first video where I showed you chains and single crochet. And now we're gonna chain. There are 25 stitches, but we're gonna need 26 chains. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Okay. Now, if that was a bit quick for you, feel free to pause the video at any time. You know. Now, if you remember, I said twenty-six. We've only got twenty-five stitches. That because. That's because this last chain that we did is going to act as the step up to the next row, okay? So we're then going to skip, let me pull you closer. We are going to skip that first chain right there, that V. We're not going to work into that one. We're going to go into the second one from the hook. And on a pattern, this would say single crochet into second chain from hook, okay? So... Our first row is all our background colour, so I'm just going to work across. Feel free to pause and then unpause me when you've reached the end. But I'm going to—I'm working it with you, so I'm not going to um, pause and come back when I finish the row. I am—I'm going to work the whole thing with you, even if it means doing half today, half next week, or sort of break it up over a couple of videos. Maybe not over next week break it up this week into like two or three videos i do apologize i keep pulling backwards because i'm used to crocheting right in front of me and this <laughs> this isn't straight in front of me so it can be a little awkward for me but i will get used to it so just single crochet your way across i am going to refer to it as single crochet from now on just because that's what it was when I learnt, even though that's American terms. But for anyone who lives in the UK, it is called a double crochet. And 
don't forget that last chain right there next to the knot so that's your first that's your foundation chain and your first row so i'm just going to put a line through this row okay now remember row number two goes this way hence the numbers being on the opposite side because you're going to rotate clockwise chain one and now you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and it's an all background row again so If you have any troubles with the pdf let me know i can always email, email it to you or something my other half's the tech ways i get him on it but hopefully fingers crossed it should be there and it's okay All the kids are upstairs doing their schoolwork, so it's really, really quiet. I can hear the clock ticking. <laughs> Don't forget that last one. Okay, so we've come to the end of row number two. So we're going to mark this one off. And I've set it on purpose so that your third row, you're going the right way. And it'll be a little bit easier for introducing your colours. But turn your work clockwise. So it was here, just flick it around, chain one. Now hold that there a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So twelve in the background colour. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now don't finish number twelve, remember, because the loop you create from this one is going to lie over the next colour. So I'm just going to grab a red, just unwind a little bit from that, grab the yarn, make a loop with your fingers and pull it through. Just give the yellow a little tug to make sure it's snug and we're okay to carry on with the red now we only have one stitch so that's okay in yarn over pull up a loop no stop because the next color is yellow so we don't want to finish that red we're going to grab another bobbin of yellow i'll show you what to do with those in a minute for when you flip it over just in case make another loop grab it and pull it through the two loops on the hook Give the red a little tug, only a gentle tug, mind. Now make sure those tails are tucked down, otherwise you're going to end up catching them. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, another 12 yellows. So 12 till the end, yellow to the end I mean, 1. Now it is entirely up to you, but I've just done it as natural now and I've just realised I sew over my tail that I've just created. Whoops. And all I mean by that is I lie along the top of where I'm working. So I go through the stitch, pull the yarn through, make sure that tail is in and you're catching the yarn over it and pull the, the yarn through the two loops. Make sure it sits down. So then you never have to think about like trying to keep it out of the way and then that you crochet over it. So I wasn't counting either. I think that's number 10. 11. I was correct. Don't forget that last one. So there you've introduced your first colour, which is there. So we're going to mark off this row. So now we're on row number four. Four's over here, so we know we're going back this way. So now if you you can leave you your bobbins if you like the way they are. And just keep crossing and uncrossing them as you go or if you don't like to do that and you like to keep them tuck the yarn through there make sure the peg's shut because then yeah my pegs I've wound them that tight they don't shut there you go 
so then when you pick it up it doesn't come out see just tuck it through and I wind my peg so tight it doesn't always work for me so yeah that one's worked and you can you can just undo them when you've flipped it over so if you grab let me just pull that through a little bit if you grab your work and spin it your bobbins won't have unwound themselves and we can work on this next row so grab that loop before I lose it now I'll just pop my ends out two seconds usually I don't do that but you know I let them cross and then I make sure I flip it the other way when I'm going back so that they're not crossed okay so chain one because we're restarting a new row now this time we notice we have an extra red above that last yellow so there's 11 yellows here if I'm correct so one and go on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. I was just checking one two three four moved up five six seven eight nine ten eleven now stop don't finish it because now just drop that yellow down the back for some reason my reds round the front no it's round the bottom of the piece drop that tail okay so now pull that red through those two yellows give the yellow just a little tug now make sure that's tucked up there so you're going to you're going to crochet over it but be careful because it hides that last yellow stitch that's tucked in there right there okay you knew one was above the yellow so it's there I can't grip this sometimes it can be a little tight it depends how hard you've pulled your yarn so now we're going to do three one two three reds so there's one number two in the red number three in the yellow the other side now stop we're going to drop the red and we're going to pick up this yellow so pull the yellow through the two loops give the red a little tug now we're going to do 11 yellows right to the end Now if you need to pause and catch up that's okay but that's our last row number four that's that one I'm not actually going to untwist my yarns this time I'm just going to leave them where they are because it just saves the hassle for me so oh my goodness I've been trying to keep my feet still for the past 10 minutes <sighs> Okay, so we're going to start a new row. So chain one. Now this time we've got an extra red again above that last yellow. So this is going to be 10. Yep, just counted. So in that first stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten stop don't finish it drop the yellow pick up the red and be careful that you don't pull that too tight because it'll pull this over what you need to do because it's like not above where it was grab it but hold it here so that you're pulling off the working yarn to stretch it across the yellow a little tug so now we need one, two, three, four, five reds. This one in the yellow. One, two, didn't even realize I was catching you then. Three, four, fifth one in the yellow. Stop, drop the red down the back. Pick up the yellow, pull it through the two. Now you can see I've made that loop a little too big, so that's why you just give that color a little tug 
Now we've got 10 yellows this side, making sure to keep that tail out the way. Because I've done that so many times, I've actually pulled up a loop of yellow and a loop of red, or whatever colour it was I was working with. So I've just not made sure it was out the way. Okay, so that's another row down. So we're going to mark off row number five. And then you can see my yarn is twisted, but this one's on top. So I'm going to twist it that way. Get me out of the way. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. I've never had to work this <laughs> my hands this close to the camera and like trying to see through the camera before so it's still kind of new anyway they are all now no they're not because that one's had a wobbly <laughs> they're all untwisted they are now so the next row we're going to actually need another yellow in the middle which means we're going to need to attach another red as well so pull another yellow the yellow will come after the red I didn't untwist them now look the yellow comes after the red and then you're going to need another red there so row number six and we're going backwards two three four five six seven so we're going to do nine yellow so chain one to start there's one two three four five six seven eight nine remember don't finish that stitch so we're going to drop the yellow over there pick up this red pull the red through and pull the yellow a little snug so now we're going to do three because there's a break here, so it's one, two, three. So there's one, there's two, and three. Stop, don't finish. Now we're going to pick up a colour that we've not, a bobbin, sorry, that we've not used already. So we're just going to make a loop with our fingers, grab and pull it through. Now we only need one stitch of yellow. So there's one stop because now we're going to pull up a new bobbin of red. It doesn't matter that you've used red here because if you use the red then the yellow and then go back to this red you're going to have a strand of red going across here on the back between the two and you don't want that. So every colour change has to be a new bobbin whether you've used the colour before or not. But you'll get used to that. Where's that gone? There we go. So now that we've done that yellow, we need to do three red, one of which is going to be on the yellow. So there's one. Make sure your tails are hanging. Two and three. Now stop. And I've just caught the tail. Three. So we've already got this yellow. It's right here. And because it's only one stitch over, I've left it. I haven't sewn over it or crocheted over it. Right, now we're going to use yellow all the way to the end, which is nine, I think we did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes your yarn splits, don't worry about that, as long as you try and get all of them over. Nine. Okay, so don't worry about this tail for now. We're going to sew that in later. And this is what I mean about the edges not being perfect. But that's okay. If I... I'll show you at some point, maybe in the next one, my the graph gun I'm working on at the minute, these edges, they're never perfectly straight. But when you finish the piece, it looks okay. So don't worry too much. But for now, we're going to mark off row number six. Now we're going the right way again and we're going on to row seven. So let's 
So I need to spin. No. Yeah. So if you do it up there, the, the yarns all end up at the front and then it ends up just a big mess. Let's try and get these tails out of the way. Don't be put off by tails and ends and stuff. Honestly, don't worry about it for now. So this time we've got eight to do. So chain one into that first stitch. One, two, three, four. I missed it. Five, six, seven. Don't complete number eight. Drop that yellow down. Pick up the red. Pull up a loop, but remember, don't pull from here. Let it pull from the bobbin. Right now we need three reds again. One, two, three. Don't finish that stitch, remember. Pick up the next yellow. Don't worry about which bobbin it is, just look at you where your, your ends are coming from. Let's just give that red a little tug. There we go. Now we need three yellows in this one, or whatever your contrast colour is, your background. One, two, three. Don't finish the third one, let the yellow go. Pick up your heart colour and pull that through those two loops instead. Just remember why I said that so you'll never forget. The loop you pull up here is going to be the loop that sits above the next stitch. So it has to be in the same colour. So three reds here. One, two and three. Don't finish. Let the red go. Pick up the yellow. Pull the yellow through those two and finish the row in your background colour. Four, five, and it should be eight, six, yeah, seven, eight. I thought a heart would be the, um, the easiest pattern for you guys to follow. So now we're gonna cross off row number seven. I'm not going to do all of this with you today. Right, figure out which my bobbins have all moved around. No, that's over there. Okay, so I'm going to flick anti-clockwise. But then I'm going to tuck this wall behind. And we're going to move on to the next row. Now we're going to be one short again. So it should be seven this time. So chain one. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Don't finish it. Let the yellow go. Pull up the red. Pinch it here so you pull from the bobbin, not from there. Give the yellow a little tug. Now three reds again. So one in the yellow. One, two, and three. Don't finish, let go of the red. Pick up your background color. Pull it through those two loops. Give the red a little tug. Now, one, two, three, four, five stitches in yellow this time, or your background color. One, two, three, four. And the fifth one is in the red the other side, but don't finish it, let go of the yellow. And pull up your heart colour. Give that a tiny little tug. Where's it gone? There it is. Now we're going to do three reds again. One. Two. And three. I keep moving. I'm so sorry guys. Drop the red. Pick up your background colour. And we're going to finish the row. And it should be seven of these. One. Two. Three four, five, six, and seven. So, 
Oops. Now we're going to mark off row number eight. I don't know why I counted that side. I was going that way, but it doesn't matter because each side matches anyway. So it's only when you've got a pattern that doesn't match on both sides that you need to be pretty observant of your rows. So row number nine, we need six yellows. So chain one into that first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Drop the yellow, don't finish it. Pick up the red and pull through. Give the yellow just a little tug. Now three again. One, two, and three. Stop there, drop the red, pick up the yellow. Now, two, three, four, five, six, seven yellows this time, the first one in the red. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Stop there, don't finish it. We are going to grab the red or whatever your heart colour is, pull the yellow. Now we need three again of these. One, two and three. Stop, don't finish. Grab the yellow and pull it through. And we're going to finish the row in the background colour. One, two, which should be six, three, four, five and six. So that's what we're looking like so far. I know these tails get in the way and they make it look a bit messy, but you're going to sew them in later. So you'll need a darning needle or a wool, a wool needle or a yarn needle, whatever you call it. OK, so now we're going to flick again. We're going to go clockwise this time because I went anti-clockwise last time. If you take your hook out, it helps. Right, so this next row, we are going on to row number 10, which is going this way. One, two, so we need five yellows. So chain one. So I was looking at the picture. And we go one, two, three, four, and five. Don't finish, pull up the red. Give the yellow a little tug just to keep it snug. Now we're going to need three reds again. Nope, wrong way. Three reds again. One, two, and three. Stop. Drop the red. Pull up your background colour. And then we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine in the background colour. So the first one's in the red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Feel free to pause. Eight. And the last one, the ninth one, is in the red, but drop the yellow, don't finish it. Finish that with the red. Now we're going to need three reds. One, two, Three, don't finish it, drop the red, pick up the yellow. And now we're going to do five yellows to finish the row. Two, three, four, five. So that is that row. Let's move that up. We're going to mark off row number 10. And you're doing fabulous if you've kept with me so far and yours looks like mine does. See, look. It's starting to look a bit better now. Yes, you've got these little dots of yellow in there, but that's normal. That's okay. And the same on the other side. That's good. But as you go, you'll see that the, the heart starts to take shape and it doesn't matter so much. Right, I'm going to do a couple more rows with you and then I'm going to let you go and I'll finish this with you in the next one. So I'm going to pull that out, flip it, 
keep your tails down here but your working ends up there there we go so grab the loop pull it back on the hook so this time we're going the right way we only need four yellows so chain one as always and then into the first stitch do four two three four stop finish it in your heart color you don't always have to give it a tug right now you can always do it when you're finished now we're going to do three again one two and three drop the red finish it with the yellow now we're going to do 11 i believe it was nine on the last row oops one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven drop the yellow finish it with the heart color we need three we go in three again so one two and three stop finish it with your background color and then we're going to need four of those two three and four so that's the next row number 11 done i do one more row with you and then i shall finish it here but i will finish it with you in the next video unless you feel confident enough to carry on and finish and then i will show you how to finish it at the end of next time's video so we're going backwards this time so we need three yellows chain one as always and then one two and three finish that third one in your heart color then we need three reds one two and three finish it in your background color and we're going to need 13 i already know that just because it's two more than the last row <laughs> not forgetting that one right there see it's kind of hidden there's a stitch right behind this strand here make sure you don't miss it so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen you always know it's correct because it's one on the one on top of the reds finish it with your heart color and then we need three of the heart color one two and three don't finish it finish it with your background color and again we need three yellows one two and three so that's row number 12 done i'm going to leave it here if you're feeling confident enough to carry on and work up until here feel free that's fine you know i'll just re you can just rejoin me in the next video where you've kind of got to the top if you're not feeling so comfortable about adding another two colors here because at the moment this is one yellow but you're going to have to split that yellow and add a red which means then you're going to have to add another yellow if you're not feeling confident enough to do that then hang on till the next video i'll probably put that up tomorrow and then we can finish it there okay guys hopefully yours looks like mine and you're doing really 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 well um take care stay safe and i will see you in the next one guys Bye, guys.